All right. Uh, what's on the bench is an old stud finder. This is my old stud finder that went bad on me. Uh, Zircon. I think these probably 30, 40 years old. I don't know how old this thing was, but uh, the way that it worked is it had, uh, it had uh, these LEDs that lit up and, and you move it across and the LEDs would get bigger and then they get smaller and they're bigger and smaller and you kind of try to figure out where the middle was and then you drew a line and yeah that's the way it was and I uh, had a switch on the side for calibration so you stick it on the wall calibrate it um, so what's inside uh, I looked uh, I mean I did a video on a fancy uh, stud finder that I recently received and it has a microprocessor and a whole bunch of stuff in it, but this is like old school here. Uh, so, first of all, let's talk about the uh, display technology, okay? It has four LEDs and they're like a bar graph. They go up and they go down, they go up and they go down. And you just do that with comparators. So, if the voltage goes above a certain thing, you compare it to trips and then it trips and then it trips and then it trips. So, you need four, four comparators. And in this case, they did it with an LM324. Now, an LM324 is an op amp. But you can use an op amp as a, uh, as a comparator a little bit crudely. It's a little slow, but in this case, you don't care. So that's what uh, was used at LM324. So super, super cheap, uh, single-sided board, cheapy stuff. All right, and then the rest of the board. So let's, uh, let's get the display device out of the way so we can look at the, uh, so we can look at the rest of the board here. All right, so here is the, uh, here's the rest of the board. It has two ICs. Um, it has a MC14106. I've done a, a chip of the day on that one. And it has a MC4007, and I did a chip of the day on that one. So go back and uh, go back and watch those videos. <laughs> So what are those chips? Uh, this one is a Schmidt trigger, and this one is a bunch of uh, MOSFETs, P-channel and N-channel, a little bit of little bit of both. That's in this one. So it's kind of like, okay, here's a bunch of transistors, and here's some comparators. Basically, I mean, they're going to be using these uh, Schmidt triggers as comparators. And uh, there's a nine volt battery that makes it go. Uh, we just get that rid of that one. Maybe recycle that in my bin. Now you put this on the bo on the uh, on the uh, wall, and then you you calibrate it, and you must push this button. So how does it do that? Well, it's going to have a sample and hold. So it'll have a sample and hold circuit, and you need to hold that sample somehow. And that's what this big capacitor here is. This big giant capacitor it looks kind of out of place. It is a uh, 0.22 microfarad, and that's going to be holding the the relative reference. And then everything else will be compared to that. And it's got a couple adjustments here, probably for frequency and something or other. I don't know. And uh, yeah, so pretty simple stuff. So if anybody wants to uh, try to trace the circuit out, there's the uh, there's the back side of the board. Now, uh, what about the detecting mechanism? Well, it uses these two things, and basically it's going to be. Uh, a capacitor here and a capacitor here. So if you have some object and you have it next to this one, it'll change the capacitance between these two. You have it over here, it'll change the capacitance between these two. And if you have equal number of capacitance between the two, you can sort of detect that, right? And so if you're over to one side, it'll be low. It'll be, uh, the maximum capacitance is gonna be when you have both of them covered up because you'll have capa maximum capacitance on both of them, right? So what would a circuit like this look? I'm not going to trace this out, but what would a circuit like this look like? Uh, I found a, a patent. Uh, this patent is from uh, the uh, from a guy here uh, real close to me. He lives in Los Gatos, California. That's just down the road. And um, he talks about stuff. Now this particular patent was referenced by a, uh, I looked at, first of all, I looked up zircon patents and the oldest patent was one that was referenced in an old patent of theirs. It was referenced to this one and then it got fancier, but 
This one is kind of nice because it has um, here's here's the four here's the four um, comparators one two three four and there's the four LEDs and then uh, there's an oscillator circuit and you can see here there's a uh, the capacitance the stripe in the middle and the two stripes on the edges so this is kind of the block diagram for this thing like this and if you look at their prior art uh, it gets older okay so this is one of the oldest more simple versions of a stud finder so you have an oscillator and then you have this uh this capacitance here that will vary and um you're going to have either too much or not enough and you're going to modify the uh, pulse widths of these one shots so the oscillator is going to fire these one shots and they will fire a length of time proportionate to the amount of capacitance that's on your detector and that will get compared with this capacitor and then if the uh, uh, if one is longer than the other then you will get signal through this 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 uh, this or gate here and you will start to charge up the um, start to charge up this guy here. Now I think what this actually is, is a not not and gate. Okay, not not and. So it's gonna be looking at uh, the two. And when they are the most the same, then this guy will be fired and it will start charging this. This is, so here is your um, peak detector and you will charge that up to the maximum, okay? And then if these guys don't match, then you will have a smaller version of that and it won't charge as much, blah, 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 blah. And you could have a meter here or a bar graph with LEDs. So yeah, there we go. It's kind of what's going on. Um, if you're interested in, this, in uh, reading more about these things, the patent number is 4464622-1984. And yeah, so there you go. Anyway, I just thought it'd be fun to take a look inside, inside the old school stud finder. Yeah, pretty cool.